Hey everybody, today we're going to do a recording uh, showing the new lighting features in Foundry VTT version 7. Let's go over and just kind of show this full screen. I think this is pretty gorgeous. So this is my character, Snap. He's a turtle. And as he explore, explores the scene, you can see that his friend is outside this door with a torch. But he's inside the scene with a bunch of colored lighting, a uh, Tesla coil with a neat, you know, space kind of electric effect, and then uh, a, you know, the arcing uh, lightning bolts kind of flickering uh, on top of this uh, Frankenstein monster type scene in this evil mad scientist laboratory. So we're going to show how I built this step by step, not actually doing the, the creation of it, though, though we could do that just kind of showing the different elements and how they're put together and then coming back to here inside a foundry to show how they're rigged together. So the first step of creating this was in Incarnate where I made sort of the background image. Um, one trick in, an arcade, in Incarnate is that I do like having the kind of background base tiles suggest the grid of the tactical map for the role-playing game I'm playing. I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons but I do like sort of this dungeon tile look where the squares are the correct size. And the way I do that is inside the brush tool, uh, you can adjust the size of the, of the brush that's going to get painted and just kind of get it to the point you like it where it's going gonna, it's gonna to match up with the grid setting. So I know that 156 matches up here because I just kind of sized it out when I drew the background. But then, you know, I'm able to place all these uh, images. There's Tesla coils and lightning arcs and all these things that I can kind of put together. Um, the, these neon lights that they've got, they only come in one color. So I found that I uh, wanted to play around with the blending of different lights and have a scientist who's got neon lights of different colors for some reason. So I'm going to uh, you know, export this and take it into Photoshop where we're going to be able to um, you know, change the lighting color. So I'll show that. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and this is the effect that I'm going for. I have a, you know, the original background layer here, but then what I did is I created a new layer on top here, this, this layer one, that's the coloration layer. You can see that the type, um, the, the layer is moved into a blending mode uh, type of color, and then I've just painted in so I can, you know, color anything, anything I want by just putting a colored brush on that layer. Uh, so I'm able to just kind of change and shift the lighting color of these here in Photoshop with a nice little Photoshop trick. Export it to a JPEG, and then we're back into Foundry. All right, so I'm back in Foundry, and we can show the settings on the walls. It's a real simple, just kind of a box around, so I can see the outer walls, and then I've got a door, and then I've got a couple of tokens. Let me show how I made the tokens. So over in Hero Forge, um, this is the, the new coloration stuff in Hero Forge. I created a little dwarf for my friend here, and I went to the gear, and I just kind of searched for torch and grabbed a torch. The coloration stuff is pretty simple. It's got a lot of preset type stuff. But then when you go to the photo booth, if you're a pro user, you can kind of, you know, see, do I want it in an isometric pose or do I want it in top down? And in top down, you can sort of hide the, the base and use a ground shadow. And that's what I exported into a PNG to create that. I've got a couple other characters here. So uh, I was able to go to the heroes and uh, take my character Snap, who's the uh, the turtle character, and it's actually kind of nice that it left it in the same perspective and output a, uh, a top-down view of my, uh, my turtle here um, to use as the secondary token. For the Frankenstein monster, I just created a, uh, where is he, Frank, uh, I just created a top-down token of uh, a uh, sort of big half-giant bald, with kind of sickly green skin and blue pants. Uh, just something something that would work out really well there. And he's on top in Foundry here as a tile. So he's not a he's not an actor, he's a tile. Uh, the dwarf character, however, is an actor. And I've gone into his token, into the vision area, and I've set his dim light radius to 20 and his bright light radiance, uh, bl his bright light radius to 40 given him an orange colored torch and put it in this new setting down here in Foundry 7, which is torch. So I can set it to none and update it and it just, it doesn't flicker anymore. 
but I can also do other things uh, with him. So like if I didn't want it as a torch, as I wanted it as like a crazy sunburst or something, right? I, I could have you know different animation settings there. Uh, but let's let's go back to the token vision and just put it on torch. All right. So then uh, forward here, I've got the lights. I've got uh, you know a red one and a green one and a blue one. Let, I'm gonna right click on the lights that I've got set up and that turns them off in the scene. So the reason this looks so good and so spooky is because I've actually gone into the scene settings. Uh, let me go and get out of zoom. So I can go into these scene settings, configure the scene, and I can change the darkness level is the really important thing to look at there. So if I adjust the darkness level up and down, it makes it so that you know the base image without any light is still pretty bright there, but if I turn it down, then it's like a spooky dark room. Um, and then I've got all the other lighting sources here, right click so they turn off. But let me turn back on this red light and show it settings. So I open this up, I got a red light uh, that is uh, color intensity really low, animation type none, because it's a neon light, so I don't want it animated. So if I turn the color intensity up, you'll see it kind of overwhelms the whole scene. And I like using the color intensity because it's just a nice little dynamic slider here. Um, I could probably achieve some similar effect by you know messing with the color settings in in uh, the red bar here. But if I just mess with the color slider, uh, the color intensity slider, then I get a very similar effect. So I can you know, make this really red or just kind of red and have it so that you know the lighting is there. Now I don't want to overwhelm it because I'm going to have four of these. So if I turn on the other one, and turn all of them on, it starts to sort of wash out the color in the scene and everything kind of goes gray. So I don't want to overdo it. If I got many lights in a scene, you want to kind of tone it down and let the, in an additive sense, have them sort of contribute to the light in the scene. Let's go to the kind of flickering as the lightning strikes the grate. So if I open that up, you're going to see that it is set to torch, but instead of like the, the torch with the dwarf, I've set the animation speed all the way up. So if I turn down the animation speed, let me see if I can get this all in camera shot here, and update the lighting source, you're gonna see that it flickers way slower, and that's not that's not fast enough for a lightning. So I kinda up it, and then it should flicker much brighter there. And I just clone it, and you got two of them going. All right, let's zoom in on this Tesla coil. So for the Tesla coil, I've got a radius that kind of matches the inner part of this, and I've got it on energy field. And you'll see that there's, let me just kind of set the bright light radiance bigger. So that, that's kind of what it's doing there. Uh, and I can up the color intensity a bit, make it way kind of distracting. But if I have it lower, set it to blue, and I can you know mess with these different lighting settings. Whoa. Right, and just kind of play around with different things there, see if it's an effect that I like. Uh, but I'm just gonna continue to use that energy field, radius three, right? And then that light's ready. Right click the lights to turn them on and turn them off. All right, so here we go. Um, I think it looks great. Uh, I like a lot of this. I like how the, the light and the colors blend together, kind of making the room seem real uh, when I'm have a character selected, it's sort of from that character's perspective, so I can see the light coming in from uh, my friend with the torch, which I really like. And I, you know, I'm, you know, the room is immediately spookier and more atmospheric. Um, and uh, I, I think this is going to get a lot of really interesting play and uh, some kind of spooky ambience in a way that's a lot easier for me uh, to get working together because the lights actually blend correctly. All right. Well, I hope that was fun. I uh, hope you have fun playing with the new uh, Foundry 7 features as much as I do. Uh, I'm probably going to stay on Foundry 6 for a bit, just because I've got so much prep done in it and I don't want to redo it. But uh, the next chapter of my game, I'll probably switch to Foundry 7. This is just kind of, i got a test server here running that I turn on when I don't have the other one turned on. Uh, so cool. Thanks.